Okay, this is the last time I'm going to go here. This is for all my critics. And I, I'm not going to try to make you understand my reasoning for any of my actions. I'm going to explain it one last time. I did what I did to preserve the sanctity of the future. And somebody said, oh, I'm using my son as an excuse for not stopping. No. I don't want my son to be subject to being in the back of a police car. I don't want my sub son subject to any of that crap. It's bad enough he had to see what he did see. But for somebody and for a lot of people to think that I was just reckless willy-nilly, not giving a damn, not respecting the law, then let me point out something. Somebody just told me you have to stop within five blocks or else it's evasion. I stopped within five blocks. Someone says if you're evading, you must be trying to attempt to flee and or run from the officer. I stayed in front of the officer with my hands out the whole time. Even though I was walking backwards, I never ran from this person. I always tried to stay in front of them, but that doesn't matter. What matters is everybody looks at the store and says, how come you just didn't stop? And there's a million different reasons why I didn't stop. The main reason why I didn't stop is because I didn't want my son to have to be placed or anywhere near a police car. Period. You people don't understand. You pull somebody out of the car, which you put it like this. For instance, I had to go downtown and do my sobriety check. Now, if I had to pull over one block from the house, my child is a minor. I'm going to say this for the last time. If the police tell him, go ahead and walk home and something happens to him, that's the police station and the police officer's fault for allowing a minor to leave a scene. Period. It would have never happened. When they took me downtown to go sobriety checking and all that stuff, they would have took my child too. Period. Period. The bottom line. So if, if, if people out there who can't see the logic in what I'm telling you, then you got to be more stupider than I was. Yeah, I said it. I was pretty stupid. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't dumb. I was thinking with my heart and not my brain. I was thinking about my little brother. I was thinking about my stepbrothers. I was thinking about my fathers and everybody in my family. From Richmond, California to Sonoma, California to Clear Lake, to Memphis, Tennessee. If Oscar Grant said, you know what? I'm going to run. Oscar Grant would have ran. He would have had a 50-50 chance of living. Oscar Grant didn't run. And if he did try to run, he wasn't running fast enough. And let me break something else down for those who don't understand the true drama. My nephew, my blood's sister's son. He gets dropped off at the mall. He got out the car, put his foot down on the sidewalk. This young man is 17 years old. He just stepped out of his girlfriend's car. Stop! Freeze! He looks back. There are three police officers right there, instantly chasing him. Someone had just got robbed at the ATM around the corner. They chased this little boy for six blocks, tackled him, tasered the hell out of him, brought the people who were robbed to see if this is the person that robbed them, and they said, that's not the man. Then they took my nephew home. Now my sister is pissed. What the hell's going on here? What the hell did you do, boy? Mama, did, did you start chasing me, he says. Why? Oh, uh, ma'am, um, there was suspicion of a robbery. And, you know, he fit the description. He was ID'd not to be the perpetrator. We're bringing him home. And then they gave him a ticket for obstruction of justice. This is California. For those who don't know, that was a child. I'm a grown-ass man. If they will run a child down and tackle him like he's in a fucking planet of apes and then find out this isn't the ape I wanted to catch, they gave him a ticket for being the wrong nigga. I'm sorry. I'm not going to subject, put my child in that situation. 
You can drag me down the street from the back of your motherfucking car with a chain on my goddamn neck. I don't give a fuck as long as you don't do it to my child. I don't care about those critics who said I'd made mistakes. I did. You shouldn't have did what you did, AIX. What I did was prevent another person with my last name from being placed in the Sonoma County system. Now, my little brother, little brother, he about what, was 25 now, ever since they could arrest him, he's been arrested. He's been, they have been arresting this young man since he was younger than my son. And do you honestly think I'm going to allow someone to play with another life from my family? It's pitiful for people to say, it's all my fault that these things happen. If they weren't murdering and shooting people up and down the street, I probably wouldn't have gave a damn. If the lady was not unstrapping her guns, I probably wouldn't have cared. But it's procedure for them to get their weapons ready to shoot. Is it procedure for somebody to walk towards you drawing a weapon? You cannot command somebody to do something if they fear for their life. I don't give a damn who you are. If somebody put a 45 Magnum through your right nostril and the other part of the gun come out your left nostril, you gonna sit there until they blow your nose? I don't think so. There's a common sense factor about everything. Everything had common sense in it. And it was common sense for me to get my child out of there. I don't give a damn who's mad at me for it. Somebody, well, you put your son's life in risk. Somebody's walking towards you unstrapping a gun telling you to get in the car. They're walking to you. They're not in a neutral spot saying, hey, sir, let me see your hand. Put your hands where I can see them and get back in the car and stick your hands out the window. Nobody did that. Nobody said anything like that to me. <laughs> All I know is this. Somebody approached me with a weapon and I don't see them not using it. What would have happened if I'd have sat back in the car, reached for my wallet, and she fired into the car? Period. I was already out of the car. I was already a suspect. You gonna allow a suspect to get in a deadly weapon? I could have jumped in that car, slapped in reverse, and crunched that lady between two cars. And on top of this, now, I had a friend of mine who was sitting in the backyard. While the cop had walked me to this direction, he walked up behind her, saw her, and backed up. She never once saw this man. So if I was crooked and fucked up and this or that, she walked into a fucking ambush. When I was just standing at the back of my car saying, ma'am, so please, those who don't know me you will never know me. Those who think they can fiddle around inside the brain of AIX don't know me. I know one thing. I'm the cop. The black man gets out the car. Sir, stand right there. Don't move. Put your hands where I can see them. Period. I'm not going to approach somebody pulling out a gun and expect them to listen to me. Not every black person is a criminal. Not every white man is going to shoot a black person. Not every white person wants to shoot somebody. But when you see somebody preparing themselves to fire, there is no compromise. If you can't hear me asking you a question, you can't answer, it's for your safety, sir. Who's wrong? So if anybody made a mistake, it was a group of mistakes made by a group of people. So all my critics, if my camera wouldn't have stopped, I'd have got up to show you my ass one more time. All my critics, you got to live in somebody's skin before you saying they're making a mistake. I have heard of and seen too many people on the news fall subject because of someone else's fear of someone else. So fuck the critics. AIX lives.